So title is Underground and Divine Orators and other imposters. Biology of late medieval revolution. Uh, so, I would like to start my presentation by this quotation that I won't read, uh, taken from the Perceval uh, by uh, Christian Croix, um, that I find uh, even more interesting as it seems to, um, to contradict our general tendency of thought. Um, during the Middle Ages, anonymity is uh, indeed the norm. Uh, um, characteristic and the final, uh, the final uh, feature in um, figurative arts, literature, and, uh, and the music, uh, music composition. The erasure of, uh, of uh, authorship is further accentuated by a um, range of uh, practices dealing with that uh, um, creation and transmission, which um, contribute to distance the author from, from uh, his, uh, his text, resulting generally in a multi layered, uh, layered uh, composition, uh, which uh, heightens the, uh, the, uh, the mystery surrounding its, uh, uh, its origin. Um, so, while the author's name is a uh, often remains uh, elusive, uh, and sometimes a name uh, emerges uh, contrary to the prevailing attitude, but even in such case, it frequently fails to fully uh, unveil the clock of, uh, of uh, anonymity. So, con um, contrary, um, um, far less indicative than what Chrétien would uh, uh, believe, this name uh, seems uh, destined to uh, remain their names without. Uh, without an uh, identity. So the um, backstage of literary creation adds many uh, anonymous uh, voices, uh, and this is the case of uh, evils, evils, uh, medieval evils uh, of them. So the writing practice uh, amongst evils has never been subject of many studies uh, um, due to the scarcity of textual, uh, textual materials. Uh, but if some texts have been preserved, if some texts have been, uh, have been preserved, they are uh, generally signed uh, under uh, pseudonyms that were quite generic, that were, mm, they were name of regions, motors, word plays, uh, uh, that were um, reused by other evils in history. And that is the case of uh, Toison d'Or, that you can see here, which corresponds to six identified uh, evils in, uh, in the history uh, of Burgundy between the 13th and 16th century. So, um, um, in this uh, precise case, uh, uh, where we have a few texts and even fewer identifiable authors, and uh, that identity are, uh, are hidden and, um, uh, and to the list of potential candidates significantly reduced, represent a specific challenge for uh, for stylology. So, attributing uh, authorship became a test of uh, identity identity uh, verification. So, at the heart of our uh, investigation lies uh, two um, anonymous poems. Uh, um, held, uh, um, attracted by a manuscript held at the National Library of France, um, with attribution to Nicolas de Ladon, Irald of Arm of the Church V, and uh, author of a um, monumental body of uh, poetry uh, raised uh, with questions. So the first one is the Blason des Armes de Lalan, um, signed by uh, Luxembourg de uh, Irald. So uh, Luxembourg was one of the pen name of uh, Nicolas de Ladon. Well, the second one, Epitaph de Jean de Luxembourg, uh, is um, uh, attributed by the running title of the same manuscript to the dreamer of Bapom, and Songer, and Songer de, de Bapom. So, uh, with another pen name of Nicaise Adam, who was provost of the city of uh, Bapom between 1530 uh, and 1533. Uh, so, basically, our question is could Nicaise Adam be concealing his identity behind these two, uh, these two uh, fictional names? So, in, in modern times, Adam. Um, in modern times, of them have reached no attention by critics, and in past, uh, for the past, the archives uh, uh, provide less to no information about, about him, even if he spent nearly 50 years in service of the Burgundian princes. His contemporary never mentioned him, even uh, despite his versatility and his proficiency and prolificacy, I, I, I would say, as, as a poet. He's the author of uh, 80 occasional poems and a monumental rhymed chronicle of about 800 folios and record and records in prose from his activity of, uh, of uh, evil events. Our carpet is composed uh, by uh, 60 poems, over 60 poems, occasional poems, uh, mostly unpublished, that we acquired uh, through. Uh, OCR and edited for the text of uh, of uh, Nikita Valandi as part of my of my thesis PhD research, um, where we uh, didn't use the existing critical edition that we later uh, that we later amend. So 
Uh, as for the authors, there are five. So there are five uh, rhetoricians, three of which are Burgundian, uh, Nick Azadan, of course, Georges Chatelain and uh, Jean Molinet, and two uh, French, uh, Guillaume Cretan and uh, Octavien Sanzolet. So the, um, the two criteria that, uh, we, uh, to which we gave, uh, we gave the priority was the, the author's uh, origin and uh, affiliation. So such be, um, just being Burgundian and having um, pursued a career at the uh, weather of Burgundy or, uh, or of France. So the main challenges or difficulties in establishing our campus and, and treatment of, uh, of it was the scarcity of, uh, of uh, text, uh, of uh, edited text, of text of Ural Duvan, but in general the scarcity of edition of rhetoricians, and, um, and the presence of very short forms, so very short texts, uh, which attest to a um, large variety of regional script uh, due to the different uh, to eclectic uh, uh, scribal habits of, uh, of copyists. Um, let's move on to the stylometric uh, analysis part. Um, so the corpus is in Middle French, which raises a number of specific uh, issues. Um, in particular, in Middle French, you encountered a lot of exotic spellings that did not exist in Old French and disappeared in a modern and contemporary French. So it's sort of a specific period with um, a very um, extensive spelling variation and, um, and we encountered that in the, in the corpus. And we also encountered variations between scribes in the spellings of words like sou, uh, under, with a b, with a p, and all those, all those kind of etymological or pseudo-etymological letters that uh, they tended to use at this time. Uh, word segmentation is also a big issue because it's a period with a lot of ongoing lexical fixation and uh, varying habits of segmenting the words, both in the manuscript and in the critical edition. So you will encounter aucune fouet written in one word, in two words, uh, and so on. There is also the extensive use of très um, with uh, adjectives, as um, agglutinated with the following adjectives, so you can encounter très sage, très, sa très meta, written in one word or two words, and also in specifically more in our corpus, we have a lot of very weird and rare contractions, like s, uh, written in one, in one word, um, and so on. So to um, counter that, we proceeded with lemmatization and post-tagging using a model initially developed for Old French, so the pi de Calion model, um, and we corrected as, um, as we could uh, the annotation, especially of function words, uh, and we opted for the choice of maximum segmentation for all those ongoing lexical fixation because it's easier to decompose and then recompose using n-grams than to do uh, just the other way around. Um, for our analysis, we used a different set of uh, linguistic features common in stylometry, such as pseudo affixes, uh, lemma one grams, function lemmas, part of speech three grams, and hybrid patterns mixing function lemmas and part of speech. Um, and we proceeded to sample the text because their length uh, was varying. So for text longer than 1,000 words, we sampled it to, into 1,000 word sample. And for, for text shorter, we agglutinated them until uh, we can reach this 1,000 word um, uh, size. We then performed two kinds of analysis, um, supervised analysis with uh, support vector machines using linear models and um, uh, cross-validation using group k-fold. So can, we could call it leave one work out, not one sample, but all the samples from one work. Um, and we also used downsampling because um, the training material was not balanced between our different uh, candidate authors. And then we used the imposter's method as a comparison uh, of uh, with the results of our main method. So here are the results of the um, cross-validation in the training phase. Um, so we have this F1 scores for all the author and all the features that we used. And uh, what I'm going to advocate is a choice of the feature that is not the best performing with this score, but makes more sense and is relatively well performing as well. So if you look at this ta table, you can see that two affixes, so word beginning and word ending engrams and the uh, lemma, were uh, quite a performing measure, but um, I'm 
tend to uh, put them apart and to rely more on the features on the right that are less impacted by scribal variation and thematic variation. If you look at the coefficients of the SVM model for those different kind of features, on the left you have the coefficients for uh, the n character n grams and on the right as a function lemma. If you look on, on the left, supposedly the model is more performing, but it is more performing because it has biases correlated with the scribal uh, usages. If you look at the kind of features that we have here, we have regional variants such as Kika A, or um, scribal variants such as using OY or UY at the end of words instead of UE or OE, uh, and so on. So for this reason, I'm going to exclude those character engrams and rely uh, on the near refer resor results uh, on the function lemma. So here are our uh, final results with this uh, method. Uh, on the table, I indicate sort of some metrics and some conservative, uh, let's say, or cautious prediction. Um, because when you use SVN model, you always have a prediction of one candidate being more likely than the other. But I find it always interesting to look also at the coefficients um, and, um, uh, associated with the prediction, because it's not the same thing to have an attribution to a class with a coefficient above zero or uh, below zero. So here are the results from for three uh, main texts. The first one was a distractor text, which has no chance of having been written by any of the candidates other of the corpus. And if you look at the SVM result, um, you see that indeed there is no author clearly uh, to the front as um, going to the front as the main uh, candidate. Um, and for the other two texts, so for the, for the second one, Ladam apparently is not likely, is not the most likely candidate, uh, but on the other end, for the third text, the epitaph um, is the most likely candidate that we have, but there is still remaining doubt due to the limited size of our, uh, of our corpus. So to um, finish, just to say that the disattribution of the Blason des Armes to um, uh, Ladon, uh, from Ladon to uh, someone else, um, also has some historical hints corroborating it. Um, namely, we have historical mention in the chronique by Jean Le Maire des Belges of uh, someone else being also called Luxembourg le héros at the same time. So this could be uh, a good candidate. Sadly, we do not have any text from him, so we cannot do any stylometry. But um, it uh, intends to uh, corroborate our main findings here. And uh, thank you very much.